Welcome back, Trailblazers. I'm Daniel Price. And I'm Megana Fuchipudi. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of Vanguard TV. In this broadcast, we'll be covering the topics of Fetno, Emerald Delete, and much more. The usage of drugs has been among high school students and has a prevalent problem for many years. One of the most recent common drugs is fentanyl, which is highly dangerous and has fatal consequences. Faith Alores has more on what the impact of this deadly drug is. Fentanyl is a drug that is generally used to relieve pain. This drug is known for being the most addictive available to teens, causing more than 71,238 deaths leading up to 2021. As an impact, I think is that you know we have students that are looking to get high or take drugs if they take these pills uh, sometimes they don't know it's fentanyl sometimes they think it's something else uh, sometimes it is a pill laced with fentanyl by intaking fentanyl an individual can experience slowed respiration reduced blood pressure fainting nausea and seizures fentanyl is so much stronger we see students who aren't necessarily either used to or expecting um, some sort of dosage and all of a sudden their body goes into shock um, and pretty much their body starts shutting down. They, they stop breathing and then they go into a coma. There's a wide circulation and use of fentanyl among teenagers and there's potential for other drugs to be laced with fentanyl without the user's knowledge, which has made it a much more dangerous substance than others like it. While fentanyl has become more easily accessible, its dangers are becoming more apparent. This synthetic opioid is even 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. An overdose of fentanyl can cause a condition called hypoxia, a decrease of oxygen to the brain, which can lead to a coma, permanent brain damage, and even death. I'm Faith Alora, supporting for Vanguard TV. Since it was founded in 1878, Frisco has grown significantly with a variety of attractions such as the home of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Video Game Museum. Jacob Chang highlights some of the reasons people continue to become Frisco residents. Frisco is set to get a new Universal Studios attraction park produced by Universal and Steven Spielberg. Construction has yet to begin as a 90 plus anchor project is still awaiting approval from city council on a vote that'll take place at the March 7th meeting. But in the interim, Frisco has a number of pre-existing attractions that appeal to residents and visitors alike. One location that draws individuals from across the entire globe is the Star, the home of the Dallas Cowboys football team. This center is built on the $5 billion mile, an area in Frisco with hotels, restaurants, and shopping centers. The Ford Center, where the Cowboys practice and Frisco IC schools play football games during the season, offers tours of the Cowboys facilities every day of the week. Another popular venue is the National Video Game Museum, which features an extensive history of this long-standing hobby. It also includes an arcade where patrons can play a variety of old games during their visits. Frisco also hosts a large and historic library founded in 1991. The current facility will soon be replaced by a new library building that is set to open in March. Another feature in this constantly growing city is a Frisco Athletic Center, a gym, and water park that offers affordable membership prices, as well as daily passes for visitors. The water park isn't currently open during the winter season, but will be open on May 29th. I'm Jacob Chang, reporting for Vanguard TV. Opportunities to take the SAT are underway, and juniors at LT are making considered efforts to prepare for this test. Dean Sainju learns more about what strategies students are using to ensure that they are successful. The SAT is an annual test that high schoolers across America take. While it may seem intimidating, understanding the best testing strategies is key. Most students are using the free Khan Academy SAT practice or going to classes such as Katy College in Huntington. I'm preparing for the SAT by doing Khan Academy, lots of Khan Academy, and I did sign up for SAT prep class and I go to those classes on the weekend. There's a class close to here, Katy College, which is pretty helpful. Huntington, which my friends do, is pretty helpful. But also just like knowing what I need to work on. Like a lot of the math I forgot, so I've been going back and just working on math and looking at other tests that were already released. 
Honestly, don't really worry about the difficulty of the questions. Most of the SAT is just learning to have really good stamina. So if you just learn like the simple tricks for the test and then just get really good at doing it quickly, you're set. If you want to take the SAT again or want to take it and you're not a junior, go to the College Board website and go to SAT dates and deadlines. The next two times to sign up are May 6th and June 3rd. I'm Dean Sanji reporting for Vanguard TV. As springtime approaches, many sports have returned from their advanced competitions or are participating in playoffs. Ethan Wu has more on the early games of spring sports and the achievements of LT's winter sports teams. Welcome to another edition of Laser Sports Updates. As winter season begins to end, spring sports continue to roll on with more successes and achievements. Our boys soccer team has had a tough time in the most recent district play process with a record of one win, seven losses, placing them in seventh place in districts. The Blazers lost against some tough opponents such as Emerson and Heritage, but won against opponents such as Liberty with a final score of one to zero. They most recently played against the Centennial Titans on March 3rd with a pending final score. This week, the Blazers will go up against the Independent Science in a home game at 7 p.m. Tuesday. One, two, three, Valley! Moving on to the girls, with a four win streak, the Blazers performed exceptionally well in recent district play, with their current record at eight wins and only one loss against the Independent Knights. They defeated challenging opponents such as the Liberty Red Hawks, Heritage Coyotes, Emerson Mavericks, and most recently, and for the second time in district play, the Centennial Titans, in their most recent game on March 3rd with a final score of 4-0. Up next, the Blazers will face off against the Independence Knights in an away game at 5.30pm Tuesday. Moving into the Diamond Fields, softball has had a moderate season so far with a record of 5-10, losing against some difficult opponents such as the Brazil Bengals and the Lone Star Rangers, but bounced back with victories against the MacArthur Cardinals and most recently, the Frisco Raccoons in their final game before district play begins on March 3rd with a final score of 8-2. The Blazers will face off against the Emerson Mavericks in their first district away game on March 7th at 6.30pm. Baseball has had a balanced season so far with a 3-4 record. The Blazers most recently partook in neutral tournaments against opponents such as the Fossil Ridge Panthers, Saxe Mustangs, and Midlothian Heritage Jaguars. However, no final scores were reported for their last three games. Their next tournament will be against the Frisco Raccoons in a neutral tournament at Dieter Smith Smotherman Field and against the Panther Creek Panthers in a home game as part of the Frisco Tournament of Champions on March 9th at 10am and 2.40pm respectively. I'm Ethan Wu, reporting for Vanguard TV. Lebanon Trail's Emerald Elite Drill Team doesn't take an off-season when football is over. Tonvi Maddie spotlights the team's upcoming performances and tryouts. Lebanon Trail's drill team, Emerald Elite, has been diligently working to prepare for their upcoming contest on March 4th. Each day, students commit to long hours of practice, both in and out of school hours. So we have practice every single morning that starts at 6.30 and goes until 8.30. And over our four day weekend, we practiced on Saturday and Monday from noon to 3.30 as a team. And then on Monday, we went from nine to noon. So we're really just trying to polish our dances as a team and make sure we have everything drilled for our competition this weekend. The drill team not only has their competitions to prepare for this season, but tryouts have recently started as of this morning for students interested in becoming a part of the Emerald Elite team. Tryouts are March 6th through the 9th from 4.30, 6.30 here at LT. We'll be in the dance room and also in the main gym. What we look for is a strong dance background and then of course, just overall good dedication, hardworking and motivated. While Emerald Elite members showcase much of their talents during football season at halftime performances, the spring is a time for them to share their successes as a team during competition season. Students interested in being part of the drill team next year can check the Emerald Elite website for specific details. I'm Tonvi Maddie, reporting for Vanguard TV. Thank you for watching Vanguard TV. I'm Egon Kuchipudi. And I'm Daniel Price. Blaze it, LT!